Hello and welcome to EngPhys 2 PO4 Lecture 29, Beam Resonance in Flex PDE. So, uh, as was the case for beam equation uh, for the beam equation in statics, in Flex PDE we don't even need to use this fourth order beam equation we were working with in the last lecture, but we can just use the full dynamic expression for each piece of the beam. Let's look at this infinitesimal cube again. Okay, what is the net force in the x direction? It's going to be because of the axial stress in x, sigma x, but then also the shear stress in the x direction. So we've got one on the y face, tau yx, which is tau xy, and one on the z face, tau zx, which is equal to tau xz. Okay, now uh, there, there's that's three of them, but there's actually three more forces on this cube. There's the one on the other x face, there's the one on the other y face, and the one on the other z face. And now the a lot of the, the ones on the opposite faces in the x direction are going to mostly cancel because sigma x on this face is going to be almost sigma x on the other face. The only difference is going to be how much it changes across this cube. So we'll say the net force due to sigma x is the area of the face times the stress on the front face here minus the stress on the back face. So if we let the front face be coordinate x plus dx, then the stress on the front face would be sigma x at x plus dx. And if the back, play, back face is at x coordinate x, then the stress on the back face is sigma x at x. So the net force in the x direction from the sigma x at the front face minus the back face would be this expression, the area of the face multiplied by sigma x at x plus dx, this x location minus sigma x at x which is the back x face over here on the other side of the cube okay difference between those two you can simplify after you write out that sigma x at x plus dx should be sigma x at x plus the rate of change of sigma x with respect to x at x multiplied by dx so if you multiply these together then you have the, the extra sigma x over on this other face all right so subtracting those and the sigma x at x cancels in each expression. Oh, missing a, missing a bracket here. This should actually also have the uh, minus sigma x term inside the bracket like that. Okay, great. So subtracting those off and the sigma x cancels with this one and we're left with del sigma x by del x dx dy dz. Well, proceeding the exact same way for the shear stresses, we can come up with the force in the x direction from uh, tau y x from this shear force. We'd be adding the, the shear force on this face minus the shear force on the back face in that direction and come up with dx dy del tau y x by del y times dy. And similarly for z, so that in total the force is the sum of these three forces, the total x force on this cube is del sigma x by del x plus del tau y x by del y plus del tau z x by del z times the differential volume of the cube. Which means that the force per unit volume is the sum of these derivatives of the forces in the x direction with respect to the appropriate other direction. So the sigma x rate of change in x direction the tau yx rate of change in y direction and the tau zx rate of change in z direction. Well, in Flex PDE, since we started using it for statics problems, we've been solving the continuity equations as our actual differential equations in the equation section. So the u equation was this rate of change in the x direction of sx, the x axial stress, plus the rate of change in the y direction of the xy shear stress plus the rate of change in the z direction of the xz shear stress xz shear stress right so comparing that with this we can see that what we've actually been solving is equivalent to saying that the net force per unit volume on the in the object is equal to zero so this explains why this has been the set of equations that worked well for statics problems and it also suggests what we should do to be solving these dynamic problems for beam dynamics, all we do, instead of saying that the net force per unit volume is equal to zero, we'll say the net force is mass times acceleration, which per unit volume would be density times the second time derivative of each of the displacements. Now, if again we're searching for harmonic solutions, then we can say that the 
second time derivative of the displacement in the x direction is going to be equal to negative omega squared times the displacement in the x direction, and similarly in the y and z direction. So the differential equations we have to solve when we're looking for resonant modes of a, of a beam or any kind of three-dimensional object are these ones. Rather than setting these equal to zero as we did in static equilibrium, we set them equal to negative the density times the square of some omega multiplied by the displacement in that direction. And that's all we have to do to make Flex PDE solve a dynamics problem. So the big challenge of this is getting the frequency right. Flex PDE will solve this problem no matter what frequency we specify. Because of how the finite element method works, it's gonna find the best solution that it can for any omega that we give it. So to make things, uh, to make flex PDE work, what we do is we give it this set of equations and then change around omega and look for where the solution gets, uh, where, where we're allowed to have a non-trivial solution that has large displacements. The bigger the displacement we get, the closer we are to a resonant mode of the structure. So here's a, an example here. Let's use flex PDE to check the fundamental frequency we found for the cantilever in lecture 28. Here were the cantilever dimensions. And here's the uh, properties of the cantilever. We found that the first resonant mode was 462 rads per second. So here's the approach that you're gonna use. You're gonna modify the differential equations to search for harmonic solutions, as we did here. Set a load in the W direction at the tip. And the reason you have to do this is just so that Flex PDE doesn't return the trivial solution. You could also have set a displacement to be non-zero at one of the, at the boundary wall. And then try different frequencies and compare results. See where you can get a large displacement. Okay. Good for you if you managed to, to give that a shot yourself. It's, uh, it's easiest to iterate over the results using the stages syntax in Flex PDE. This is a new syntax you may not have seen before. So what you do is under the select section, you set a number of stages that you want to do. This tells you how many times you want Flex PDE to solve the same problem. For example, stages equals 20. And then you change one of the variables to be different on each stage. The way to do this is for frequency, say, we're gonna say omega equals 458 plus 0 0.5 times stage. And then for whatever stage we're in in the problem, it's going to be uh, adding this. So it starts at stage one, and then it's gonna do it's going to resolve the problem if stage equals two, and then resolve the problem if stage equals three, etc. Then we're going to uh, plot a result to compare for different stages using a history plot, like this: history at w, history uh, of the w, so the displacement in the z direction at some location on the beam, and then you can tell it to report the frequency. Here's the complete program of this. If you like, and you have the notes, you can just copy this in and then try running it. What you find is from the history plot, we have a frequency that looks like this. As we cross the resonance, then the displacement changes from being large in one direction to being large in the opposite direction as we move above the resonant frequency. What we're going to be doing to search for resonances is look for where this shift happens, where it flips from being on one side of the zero to the other side. Because the resonance can happen quite uh, quite over a narrow range of frequency. If you have multiple resonances in the same plot, it can be difficult to detect. So it's good to have some idea by doing an estimate of what the resonant frequency would be for the, for the beam. So we can use the equations we had in the last section to say, well, we think the resonant frequency is gonna be around 460. So let's look around 460 when we look for the resonance and see if we can find it. Let's try and find some other resonant mode. So example is try to find a different resonant mode for the same cantilever by fre sweeping frequency over a bigger range, including loads in the other directions uh, at the tip. So rather than just saying load in the W direction is some small value, set the load in the U and V direction at the tip as well. And looking at the X and Y displacement values, rather than just this W history plot, add in an X and Y history plot. So here's a, a sample start to this, set omega equals 200 times 10 to the power of 0 0.1 times stage. This is gonna sweep frequency over a very large uh, range of values. And we can see a couple of different plots here. So we see the W resonance that we found before, 
And then it looks, if you look closely, like there's other secondary W modes, which are going to be smaller. To get those to show up well in the plot, we would just want to start frequency at a higher value and zoom in on those. Uh, we'll do that in, in just a bit. Another thing you can do is look for resonances in U. These are going to be longitudinal modes. It looks like there's a longitudinal mode at this higher frequency here. And there's a, a, a transverse mode in the Y direction for this beam around a, a frequency that's a little bit bigger than the transverse mode in the in the Z direction. So looking on, we can see by say zooming in on this second resonant mode in W as promised that we get a beam shape that looks something like this. And there's nothing really special about the the cantilever modes as far as flex PDE is concerned. We could have solved this for a bridge as well to done some of the assignment questions from lecture one. If you like, you can zoom in on this and find the uh, double check the the frequency information that we found. So the second resonant mode. This uh, this is an, uh, an ex a way to check all of the information from the assignment for uh, lecture 28. So that's a great way to prepare for the assignment for this lecture is to see if you can use Flex PDE to reproduce the results from last assignment. This way you don't have to solve those differential equations. You can just use Flex PDE to find the resonant modes for you as long as you're willing to search around a little bit. And that's it.